Hi parents, thank you for checking out this video tutorial. I am Nelly from Great Solution, Jimmy Math, and today I will be going through some MCQ questions, okay? Tricky MCQ questions on fractions. So let me go through some of the techniques. So our first question here, the question is which one of the following fractions is nearest to 1? Okay, so this question looks pretty unusual but actually it's not too bad. I mean, it's not too difficult because we can actually use this technique of drawing number line. Okay, so what do I mean and how to do it? Let me show you how to do that. So for here, what we can do first, we can write a number line, draw a number line like this and write the number 1 in the middle. Okay, so look at the values. So the values given all quite close to 1, right? It's either less than 1 or more than 1. Okay, and when it's less than 1, it is from 0 to 1. When it's more than 1, it is from 1 to 2. Okay, so we can cut proportionately like this. So let's look at the first value. The first value is 2 third. So for 2 third, that means to say we are going to split this whole thing into three parts okay so out of two of it it's going to be the two third okay okay similarly let's do for four fifth so for four fifth we have got five parts right from zero to one this part we're going to cut into five parts so let's cut proportionately okay so five parts here one Two, three, four, five. So four fifth. That means it will be this line over here. So as you can see, right, four fifth got to be closer to one than two third. Okay, when we cut proportionately. Okay, then let's go on to the next value. The next value is one and three quarter. So for this one, it lies between one and two. So for this part here, we are going to cut into four parts. Okay, and the third part, right? One, three quarter. Okay, and the last value, we have got one whole three tenth. So that means the whole part here, from one to two, we are going to cut into ten parts. Okay, so half of it, and then five. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, okay, 4, 5. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, similarly here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So for 1 whole 3 tenth, it will be lying on this line. Okay, this one here. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, so it looks like the closest values will be four fifth or one whole three tenth. So let's see how far is it from one. Okay, so for four fifth, it is one fifth away. As for one whole three tenth, okay, it is three tenth away. Okay, so let's compare 1 fifth and 3 tenth. Which one is smaller? So for 1 fifth, when we make it into the same denominator, we are going to do times 2. Okay, times 2. So 1 fifth, it is equivalent to 2 tenth. Okay, so obviously 2 tenth, okay, is smaller than 3 tenth. So that means 4 fifth is closer to 1. Okay. So the answer for this question is option 2. Okay, so for the question that we just did, uh, it is pretty straightforward as we are just comparing the numerator, right? The bigger the numerator, the bigger the entire value. Now let's look at a question that deals with comparing fraction values, but we are not going to compare between the numerators, okay? Okay, instead, we are going to compare the denominators. So for this question here, the question asks us to arrange the fractions from largest to smallest. So 
we could make the denominators the same and then compare the numerators. However, the numbers in the denominators are pretty big, okay? So, whereas for the numerators, they are pretty small. So, it will be easier to change the numerators to the same value. Okay, so let's do that. So, for 2, 3, and 1, the, the smallest common multiple will be 6, okay? So, for this fraction, we are going to times 6. And we are going to get 6 over 30. And then for the 2 over 11, we are going to times 3. This will be 6 over 33. And for the middle fraction here, we are going to times 2. Okay, so now we have made the numerators the same. So we'll be comparing the denominator values. So the bigger the denominator values, the smaller the entire value is. Okay, so here we can see that the smallest will be 6 over 33. Okay, and the largest will be 6 over 20. Okay, so the largest being 6 over 20, which is 3 over 10. Okay, and then the second one being 6 over 30, which is 1 fifth. And then the third one being 2 over 11. So the answer is option 4. So a quick explanation on why when the denominator is bigger, the entire value is smaller. Okay, so like let's say we were to have a pizza splitting among 8 people versus a pizza splitting among 4 people, right? When we get 1 eighth, okay, versus when we get 1 quarter, okay? The more people we are sharing, the smaller the slice, right? So the smaller the entire value, okay? So, so for the previous question, we have changed all the numerators to the same value and then compare the denominators and manage to arrange the fractions, okay? So now we are going to head on to another question. Okay, so this question it is a question dealing with pie chart but also on fractions, okay? Okay, so let's read the question. The pie chart below shows the number of different colored pens a bookshop sold. One third of the pens sold were green. One quarter of the pens sold were either purple or red. And the rest were blue. Okay, so firstly, what does either purple or red mean? Okay, so your child might be confused at this point reading this. Okay, but not to worry, we can just think of it simply. One quarter is either purple or red. That means one quarter is both purple and red. Okay, so um, this might be something that is tricky for your child. Okay. So here we can just simply write down this part here. It is one quarter in all, okay? And the green is one third. So the first question asks what fraction of the pens sold were blue? Okay, so simply we can take one whole minus one third minus one quarter. Okay, so the common multiple 12. So 12 over 12 minus four over 12 minus three over 12. So the answer is going to be 5 over 12. Okay. Okay, so the option 2. Okay, next we are going to dive into some mini word problems that have fractions, okay? So the, for the first mini word problem, we have got this question over here. Okay, let's go ahead to read the question. There were five sevenths as many red marbles as blue marbles in a jar. Okay, so your child, P5 or P6, okay, they will know that this, we can transform it into a ratio, okay? Red to blue, it will be five is to seven. Okay, they took some blue marbles out of the jar and replaced them with the same number of red marbles. Okay, so in this action, Dave did a replacement, okay, so 
it is important to note that this is a replacement, okay? So we go on to read first. The number of red marbles became 5 ninths of all the marbles in the jar. Okay, so again, we can transform this into a ratio. So red to total 5 is to 9. Okay, so in this change, okay, in this process of replacement, what did not change? Okay, this is an important thing to ask your child. I mean, your child should be thinking and asking himself or herself what did not change. Okay, so the red changed, the blue changed, but something did not change. Okay, the thing that did not change is the total. Okay, so what we will do here, we will get the total out of the first ratio, 5 plus 7, 12. So which means to say the total is supposed to be of the same value. Okay, so we'll think about 12 and 9's lowest common multiple. So that will be 36. Okay, so we times 3 throughout to the first ratio. Okay, and then for the second ratio, we will times 4. Okay, so this will be 20. This will be 36. Okay, so as you can see, red before is 15, red after is 20. So there is an increase of red marbles that has replaced the blue marbles that left the box, right? I mean the jar, right? So this increase of red marbles amount to 5 units. So this 5 units is also the number of blue marbles that were replaced, okay, that left the jar. So that means to say this possible number, okay, is 5 units. And it has to be a multiple of 5, right? Since it is 5 unit. So the only answer is answer 10. Okay, option 2. Because the rest are not multiples of 5. Okay, so this is a pretty interesting question. Whereby it's not the most conventional way where uh, questions are being asked. Okay, when questions like this are being asked, okay, it is interesting. And it is also a good test for your child's fundamentals. Okay, so the fifth MCQ I have for you over here in this video is about working backwards. Okay, so this question involves a uh, fraction as well. Okay, so Joan, Siti and Xiu Li had 60 bits each. Joan gave two-fifths of her bits to Xiu Li. Siti gave some of her bits to Xiu Li. Xiu Li had three times the total of the remaining bits Joan and Siti had. Okay, so in this process, again, okay, um, we can see that there is a transfer, okay? So um, in this transfer, it is Joan giving to Xiu Li and Siti also giving to Xiu Li. So your child will know that we have this kind of question which we can term it as internal transfer, okay? So internal transfer meaning is like a friend give to another friend, okay? Um, whereby the whole total of the entire group does not change, okay? So um, since the total doesn't change, so we can go ahead to find the total first, which is 60 times 3. So the total before the transfer and the total after the transfer is the same, okay? So here we can see that surely had three times the total of the remaining Joan and City had. So that means to say surely to Joan and City, this is in the end, will be three is to one. Okay, that means the total is four unit. So 180 divided by four. Okay, this is going to give 45. So we can find out surely first, which is 45 times 3. Okay, 135. So here we know that surely, this is surely in the end. Okay, or yeah, surely in the end. So we know that surely received some from Joan, right? Which is 2 fifth of the initial 60. So we can go ahead to find 2 fifth of 60. This will be 24, okay? 
So 135 minus 24 minus what Joan gave her, we are going to get 111. And this amount will be what Shirley received from City and what Shirley herself have at first, right? So we know that Shirley herself also had 60 at first. So we minus another 60. Okay, so Shirley had received this amount from City. Okay, so option 3. So parents, I hope this video was easy to understand and especially for your child to understand. Okay, and in the next video, I'll be showing you more questions okay showing you more on how to solve different kind of questions and i hope especially on the interesting questions so if you have any questions or any suggestions for upcoming videos feel free to leave a comment below and do subscribe to the channel thank you